Hello, I'm Tracy Wallach. Welcome to this lecture on adaptive leadership and the work of Ronald Heifetz. This lecture provides a general overview of the work of Heifetz, Grashow, and Linsky as discussed in their seminal book, The Practice of Adaptive Leadership. I often use this text in the teaching of leadership and group relations concepts, since the theory of adaptive leadership is very much rooted in group relations theory and practice. It is written in an accessible way and offers very practical advice. Group relations and adaptive leadership theories share a number of similarities. Both theories share an emphasis on group dynamics and unconscious processes between leader and followers, though they use somewhat different language. Both theories emphasize the importance of emotions in understanding group dynamics. Both theories are concerned with leadership and with the question of authority and authorization. There are three important differences between the approaches. The notion of adaptive versus technical challenges, which does not exist in group relations theory. How the terms leadership and authority are defined and finally, the role of values. I will briefly outline these differences here and then provide a general overview of adaptive leadership. According to Heifetz, Grashow, and Linsky, change efforts often fail when leaders fail to distinguish between adaptive and technical challenges. Technical challenges are those for which there is a known solution. For example, if you have a computer problem or a plumbing problem, you would call an expert or authority who would diagnose and fix the problem for you. The problem or challenge itself may be difficult or complex, but there is a generally presumed solution. The work is done by the expert or authority, such as the IT expert or the plumber, someone who has the requisite experience. Adaptive challenges have no known solution and no easy answers, nor is there any one expert or authority who can resolve them. Examples include climate change or systemic racism. While expertise has a place here, these challenges must be addressed through multiple interventions that lead to changes in people's priorities, beliefs, habits, and loyalties. These challenges typically require learning on the part of all the stakeholders in a system. So when dealing with an adaptive challenge, the work must be done collectively by the stakeholders and not by a single authority or expert. Both group relations theory and adaptive leadership theory are concerned with the exercise of leadership and authority, but give these terms different meanings. From an adaptive leadership perspective, leadership and authority are different things. Authority is about position within a group or organization. Who has the power to make binding decisions on others? Leadership, on the other hand, is an activity or a practice. That is, it's the practice of mobilizing people to face tough adaptive challenges. And leadership can be exercised from anywhere in the organization. In group relations theory, leadership and authority are not fully distinguished from each other. Authority can come from anywhere, from above, a boss or a board, from below, that is from employees or direct reports, or from within. A leader is someone who has followers. It is both a formal and informal role. This brings us to the third major difference between group relations theory and adaptive leadership, the role of values. In an adaptive leadership approach, leadership is a values-based proposition. It is about mobilizing people to tackle tough challenges and to thrive. In this sense, leaders must be engaged in activities that are socially useful. It may involve telling people what they need to hear rather than what they want to hear. In this sense, practicing adaptive leadership can be dangerous in that it may involve disappointing the people that are authorizing the leader and result in the loss of authorization. Adaptive leadership practice is concerned with developing ethical leaders and is a prescriptive approach. 
By this definition, Hitler or Stalin would not be considered leaders since they mobilized people in negative and harmful ways. By contrast, group relations theory is not particularly concerned with values and ethics in evaluating who is or isn't a leader. A leader is someone who has followers, whether the group is engaged in good or evil. In group relations terms, Hitler and Stalin would be considered basic assumption leaders. Please see the lecture on basic assumption and Beyond's work for more information. The basic assumption label speaks to the non-rational, off-task dynamics that can arise in the exercise of leadership and authority. Group relations is fundamentally descriptive in its approach. The remainder of this video will focus on some of the basics of adaptive leadership. Adaptive leadership is specifically about change that enables the capacity to thrive. The concept of thriving comes from evolutionary biology. In evolutionary biology, successful adaptation preserves the DNA that the species needs to survive, discards or rearranges the DNA that no longer serves the current needs of the species, and creates new DNA arrangements that allows the species to flourish in new ways. In business, thriving is manifested in both short and long-term shareholder value, as well as in high workforce morale, excellent customer service, and positive social and environmental impact. Successful adaptations build on the past instead of jettisoning it. They are both conservative and progressive. They make the best use of previous knowledge. Organizational adaptation occurs through experimentation. Those seeking to lead adaptive change need an experimental mindset. It's an iterative process and there are necessarily high failure rates on the way to success. Adaptation relies on diversity. As in evolution, success requires variations. In biology, a diverse gene pool increases a species capacity to survive. In an organization, survival capacity depends on building a culture that is inclusive of diverse views and is less reliant on central planning and authority. This is especially true for global businesses. In economic policy, adaptive leadership means diversifying the economy so that people would not be dependent on one particular company or industry in order to survive. As noted earlier, new adaptations significantly displace, regulate, and rearrange some old DNA. Learning and change can be painful. Innovation in one sphere can mean significant loss in another. Adaptation takes time. Significant change is a result of incremental experiments that occur over a period of time. Organizations need time to consolidate new sets of norms and processes. Culture changes slowly. So, key to adaptive leadership is the diagnostic capacity to find out what losses are at stake in a changing situation. People don't resist change for the sake of resisting change. Change is easier when we engage in it by choice and when we know it's a good thing. But when it's imposed on us or when it involves real or potential loss, people tend to resist change and cling to what they have. Adaptive leadership in the short term is about mobilizing people to face their immediate adaptive challenges. Adaptive capacity and adaptive culture are built over time as organizational members experiment with new processes that will generate new norms that enable the organization to meet the ongoing stream of adaptive challenges posed by a turbulent environment and world. Heifetz, Grashow, and Linsky dispute as myth the idea that organizations need to change because they are broken. In reality, they say, even seemingly dysfunctional organizations operate as they do because it serves the people in that organization, or at least the ones with power. Every organization is perfectly aligned to get exactly what it is getting. What some see as dysfunctional may work well for others in the system.
For example, if an organization says it is interested in diversifying its workforce or becoming anti-racist, but is unable to find or keep employees of color, it is likely that this serves the decision makers in some way particularly if newcomers begin to question how things are done, what the organization's purpose is, or question how authority and power are managed. Three core responsibilities of the authority, whether it be the CEO or executive director or supervisor, are to provide direction, that is, you are expected to clarify roles and offer a vision, provide protection, make sure that the group, organization, or society is not vulnerable and can survive external threat. And finally, provide order and maintain stability. Leadership for a technical challenge will look different than leadership for an adaptive challenge. A technical challenge may require the leader to define and find the solution to the problem. An adaptive challenge requires the leader to identify the adaptive challenge and frame the key issues and questions. Addressing adaptive challenges means stepping into the unknown and disturbing the equilibrium of a system. Adaptive change creates turbulence that can knock people off balance and lead to conflict, frustration, panic, confusion, and fear of loss. If people are too comfortable and satisfied, they may not feel a need to change anything to address the adaptive challenge. If people are too uncomfortable or anxious, they may become paralyzed by anxiety and tension. In between these two spaces is what Heifetz referred to as the productive zone of disequilibrium. This is an environment where there is enough tension and discomfort to get people's attention and engagement, but not so much that they are disabled by it. The key for adaptive leaders is to manage their own anxiety while creating a holding environment that can help people tolerate their own discomfort and anxiety. An important component of adaptive leadership is the ability to reflect. Heifetz, Grashow, and Linsky use the metaphor of being on the balcony to describe a reflective process that can help leaders and followers in organizations increase their awareness of organizational dynamics by taking a step back to gain perspective on what is really happening. What can be seen from the balcony may be very different from what can be seen in the middle of a dance floor. Moving back and forth between the balcony and the dance floor allows people to continually assess what is happening in the organization and to take corrective action. Adaptive leadership is an iterative process involving three activities, observing events and patterns around you, interpreting what you are observing, there may be multiple hypotheses about what is really going on, Interpretation is one form of intervention. More complex interventions can be designed based on how interpretations are received and worked with by stakeholders. Addressing an adaptive challenge often involves sacrifice of some interests for the sake of a larger purpose. Given the challenges and risks involved in the practice of adaptive leadership, it is important to keep this larger purpose in mind throughout the process and to remind stakeholders of the larger purpose and the larger values which are orienting you. In summary, the practice of adaptive leadership involves getting on the balcony, creating a holding environment, identifying adaptive challenges and distinguishing them from technical problems, recognizing what stakeholders stand to lose and working with predictable defensive patterns, experimenting, engaging stakeholders, and connecting to purpose. For more information on adaptive leadership, please see the following references. To learn more about my leadership coaching and consulting services, please visit me at www.tracywallach.com.